All right, so in this video, what I wanna do is go through some very important tips that I want you to be able to follow when you are trying to simplify an expression using the order of operations. When I say to students the order of operations, immediately what they think is PEMDAS. And I use PEMDAS many, many times, but it's also very important to like really recognize the variations within PEMDAS. It's great to remember, but we need to understand in more detail what exactly it means. Because just using parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction doesn't always tell us the full story. So what I wanna do in this example is further explain the PEMDAS, but also give you some tips on how you can simplify this expression and many others and always get the answer right. And the reason why I think this tip is so helpful because I see students make the same mistakes over and over. Even students that understand exactly how to do a problem like this, they keep on getting tripped up. And a lot of times it's not because they don't know what they're doing. It's not because they're lazy. It's just because they're not paying attention to detail. So as long as you're not taking a time test, I would highly recommend doing it because there's nothing worse than making a minor mistake on simplifying expression and getting the whole problem wrong because of it. So before we get to the tip, let's go and talk about the first term of PEMDAS, which is basically means parentheses. And you might have also heard the acronym like GEMDAS, which talks about grouping symbols. And yeah, that's going to include brackets. That's going to include parentheses. When we're looking at that though, that doesn't really tell you, it just says like do parentheses. Well, which grouping symbol am I going to do first? And the answer to that is when we talk about like doing parentheses first, we always want to do the innermost parentheses or the innermost grouping symbol first. Think about like peeling an onion, right? We have the outer layer, right? And we could have multiple, multiple different layers or multiple, multiple different grouping symbols. But we want to look at the innermost core. We want to look at the core of the problem and we want to simplify those expressions first. So you can see in this example here, I kind of have two expressions that I can simplify that are not going to impact each other. I have a two minus three inside these parentheses and I have a negative one minus four inside these parentheses. We can do both of them at the same time and it's very, very important to make sure you simplify your expression and leave the parentheses there. Don't just get rid of the parentheses because we only want to get rid of parentheses once we've applied an operation that eliminates them. And that's not going to happen on this step. Right now, we're simplifying inside the parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify these and then go ahead and rewrite the whole expression all over again. And that's the pace that I want you guys to do. I want you to go through PEMDAS step by step. And every single time you apply one section of that and then rewrite the whole expression. Because what I see students trying to do, they try to simplify multiple steps within a problem and they usually make mistakes because they go outside order of operations or they just make a mental error in their head. So my best tip that I can recommend to you is follow the order of operations step by step. If then for each step, go ahead and write a new line. So the first line we did was our innermost parentheses. I also add in that extra tip, whenever you're simplifying inside the parentheses, keep them inside their group symbol until you apply an operation that's going to get rid of them. Now we do have two operations that will get rid of them, right? We have a nine times the parentheses, and then we have these parentheses squared. Both of those operations, we will not need to rewrite parentheses after that operation has been applied. Let's go and take a look real quick on why if we did not include parentheses, that'd be a mistake. If I didn't put parentheses around this negative one, I would have an expression nine minus negative one. And if you go and take a look at this, you probably would not remember this was nine times a negative one, right? Because when I have nine parentheses negative one, that is understood as nine times a negative one. But if you see me write it like this, with no parentheses, that's a nine minus negative one, which is a negative eight, which is not the same as nine times negative one, which is negative nine. Keeping those parentheses is extremely important. The same thing comes over here. If I have a negative five quantity squared, if I don't put parentheses around that, that's a negative one times a five squared, right? So therefore five squared is 25 and then times a negative one would be a negative 25. But when you have parentheses, squared, everything inside those parentheses is being multiplied by themselves. So negative five times negative five is a positive 25. It would give you a completely different answer, right? Negative 25 is completely different than positive 25. So please make sure you keep those parentheses until you apply the operation. Now let's go and get into the next operation, which is going to be like exponents or powers, anything being raised to a power. And you can see here, the only power that I have here is the squaring. So I have a negative five squared, which is just going to be a positive 25. Now you could apply this operation at the same time, but again, I'm just going to follow my tip and I'm going to take this slow. And again, guys, when you take things slow, that's usually a great way to avoid mistakes. And being a teacher myself and teaching thousands of problems in front of students and online, any single time that I try to condense or make things go fast is usually a time when I'd make a mistake. Okay, and you can see here, I don't need to put the 25 inside parentheses, like minus a 25 inside parentheses or outside parentheses is exactly the same. You could also go ahead and subtract those, right, if you wanted to. But again, I'm just following my tip. I'm just going to do things one at a time. Now I'm going to do my multiplication or division. And you can see here, I have a multiplication of nine times negative one. Okay. And again, for all of you that are saying you could do definitely this in head, I know I totally get it. This is an idea of a tip for avoiding making mistakes, right? You could already have a negative 27. There's nothing wrong with that. All I'm saying if when I see students make mistakes, it's usually of them applying multiple simplifying steps on each step. Now this last row, again, we still need to simplify 
our grouping symbol, right? So we got rid of all of our parentheses, but now we have this grouping symbol of brackets. So again, I want to simplify inside of there. Now you can see I have a minus nine, minus 25, minus two. Like what do we do first that we're both subtracting? But again, if you had some addition and subtraction, don't just assume that addition is before subtraction. You always wanna make sure you work from left to right. So again, just kind of keeping, even though in this case it would not really matter, I'm just gonna work from left to right using these operations. And now you can see all you gotta do is subtract a negative 34 minus two, which is gonna give me a negative 36. Okay, and now you guys can see I have a 33 fourths times a negative 36. Now, again, I can just go ahead and rewrite a 36 as over one, and four divides into a negative 36. That's gonna be a negative nine times. Negative nine times three is going to give me a negative 27. Now, again, you don't need to let me know in the comments below how fast you could have solved this problem. And if you could do it that fast in your head, congratulations, that is awesome. I am very happy for you. But hopefully if you struggle with math or if you've struggled with making mistakes in the past, this video was helpful for you on seeing how you can work through a problem step by step by following the order of operations. If you want more examples on simplifying expressions, check out the playlist I have for you down below. Or if you want more tips and tricks, check out the next video I have for you here.